Oh, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters on ThinkTech. It's a beautiful day today in Honolulu. It's one of those exquisite, perfect days. And it makes you think of nature and all the pretty things that are around us. And one of them, of course, is butterflies. So that's why we're doing a butterfly show. It's a chocho-san in Jap Japanese, right? Um, anyway, we have somebody who is very heavily invested uh, in butterflies, and that is a legal administrator who happens to be here in the same building with us, downtown Honolulu. Her name is Darlene McDowell, Lou, Lou McDowell. Did I get that right? That's right. Darlene, welcome <laughs> to the show. We are so interested in finding out what you do and why you do butterflies among, you know, beyond, in addition to everything else you do. So let, let's talk about butterflies. What do you do with butterflies? <laughs> So um, I consider myself a butterfly rancher instead of a breeder because the butterflies fly in and out of my garden all day long and they eat and they lay eggs. I gather up the caterpillars, I shelter them until they become butterflies and then they go to um, weddings and funerals and parties and uh, just, you know, create joy for other people. Um, they also are, are released in my garden. So uh, that, is, that is the business of um, raising butterflies. You raise butterflies. They're your babies. They are my babies. <laughs> you give them names? No names. No names. <laughs> I cannot keep track of which one is which. But, um, you know, there are so many predators in Hawaii that in nature less than 10% make it through the whole cycle. Ooh. And so when we gather them, we shelter them so they have a much better chance of survival. So let's talk about, uh, you know, the, the life cycle. Well, you, I guess it starts with a caterpillar? It starts with an egg. I'm uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it starts with an egg and uh, then it turns into a caterpillar in approximately three days. Three days. Yes, and then the caterpillar eats and poops and eats and poops for another seven days or so, and then it becomes a chrysalis. Which is? That is the, um, the cocoon, but it's actually a chrysalis. So moths make cocoons and butterflies make chrysalis. Okay, and what does it look like? It's green, beautiful. It's a beaut it has gold, ah, gold fleck in okay. it. And in another 10 days, if we're lucky, the butterfly will emerge. And then what? What do you do when the butterfly emerges? So you have to give a special treatment. I, don't say, I always think of a butterfly as a her anyway. Let's talk about them in the female. <laughs> okay. No, so um, if they don't go to a wedding or a funeral or um, party, uh, we release them into the garden. Yeah. Do you have to uh, train them at all to go to the wedding or the funeral? For example, you know, you want them to be happy at the wedding and maybe a little sad at the funeral. Do you show them how to do that? You're very funny. <laughs> so the butterflies are, they're hand fed. So I can keep them for a few days. They're hand fed. And if you look onto the website, uh -huh. there's a lot of people that are holding butterflies. And so they um, are used to being held. But once they're free, they, they go about naturally doing what butterflies do, which is pollinate. And, um, you know, just. You can hold they, them. They, will yes. they, they'll stay on your hand? Yes. Well, for, for a few seconds. Yeah. And butterflies are very spiritual. They connect with certain people. So it, for some reason, they go in and fly. They pick people specifically, and they stay with them. I, I have many stories. We have always you know, thought of butterflies as friendly and, and sweet and beautiful and, you know, um, special quality, special personality, if you will. Is it true? Do they ever bite you? Do they ever do things that are, you know, not so beautiful? <clears throat> well, butterflies don't have teeth. They have a proboscis, which is their tongue, and they unroll their tongue into the flower to sip nectar. So, no, they cannot bite. Okay, good. They can't sting either. Okay. Um, but those in the wild will not naturally come to you. They will not. So how do you no. get them on your hand then? Ah, uh, by hand are, feeding, is that it? Because they are, yeah, they're all hand fed. And so they're used to being handled. But, you know, once they're free, they, they go about their business. 
Once they're finished at the wedding or the funeral, what happens to them? They go and populate the areas that they're released in. Or they stay. They, if, if there's food in that area that they're released in, then they will stay, which is what happens in my garden. I release them and they're free to fly. It's not an enclosed garden. It's, it's open. So they fly around all around the neighborhood and they come back and they eat and lay eggs and then the cycle starts all over again. Your garden must be very, very beautiful. It's very peaceful. I'm sure. Well, that's a, one of the characteristics of a butterfly. It's a, a carefree and peaceful and friendly. Yes. And all that. Yeah. So what do you feed them? I mean, and how do you, what, what kind of food do you put down to have them come back? Uh, the flowers is what they eat. So you have to get flowers for yes. them? Yes. And in that case, you have to grow the flowers for them? Ideally, or you spend a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> having to buy flowers all the time. Is that it? Is that the whole diet? You don't feed them chopped liver or anything? <laughs> so there's a variety of flowers that they enjoy. Um, milkweed is essential for their babies because that's what the cat, baby caterpillars eat. And, and we're talking specifically monarch butterflies, right? Uh -huh. I, I raise only monarch butterflies. Uh -huh. So every butterfly has its own food plant for its babies. Is the one on the screen behind you a monarch? That is a monarch. Oh, I'm so we looking for one, you know, so we got the right one. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> so Darlene, you know a lot about this. I mean, how did you learn this? Did you go study or what? I've been progressively doing this for almost eight years now. And I do belong to two butterfly associations. One is the International Butterfly Breeders Association, and the other one is Association for Butterflies. So there are forums, that, forums. there are conferences that I attend every year lots of networking, best practices that I learn. Um, and I also have a team of people that oh. I work with. Oh, uh, in your company, in your butterfly company. Yes. What's the name of your company? Sharing the Butterfly Experience. And the name of your website is sharing the butterfly experience, what, dot com? Dot com, yes. Oh. So I have about 15 to 20 people that um, work with me and they raise butterflies and that's how we get so many. So um, one of my clients is the Legacy of Life and every year they order 100 plus butterflies to be released to honor the uh, organ donor, uh, fam the families of the organ donor. So let's talk about that. So I'm, I'm a, an organization that would like to have butterflies for whatever reason, a nonprofit, uh, Sounds like appropriate. Um, and I want to have butterflies at Like my for event. a celebration. Celebration, yeah. If you're doing this, you know, butterflies are very symbolic of change. Change. Yeah, the metamorphosis of course. that happens. Of course. So of course. if you, for weddings, the metamorphosis is the transition from being yes. single to married. Yes. yes. Uh, for, for births, you know, the newborn babies. It's the, the coming of the, the baby, right? Yes. So there, there are lots of reasons to have butterflies to help you celebrate. Well, I didn't, uh, you know, that's really, the metamorphosis part really strikes me. So um, you started out by yourself because you were yes. a hobbyist and you really liked butterflies. And now you have, you know, a dozen people or more that you work with and you go to weddings and bar mitzvahs and everything. Um, so... How did that happen? What, what, what made you, you know, take it so seriously? Uh, so I started with just a garden, a butterfly garden. I started with a few plants and lots of trial and error. And then uh, talking with people in, in the associations that I belong to and what they are doing. In the mainland, it, butterfly releases are so much more popular than Hawaii. In Hawaii, I'm still trying to educate the, the public that butterflies are an option. People don't think about butterflies um, when they are planning a wedding or a celebration. Well, but butterflies are, are native to Hawaii. There's plenty of them around, yeah? There's, there's lots of butterflies, but I, again, there are lots of pr predators. Ah. So um, that's why you don't see as many as you did maybe 
25 years ago. So let's go back to my, uh, my, my scenario. So there you are, sitting in your sharing the experience office, and uh, the phone rings, and it's, it says, you say, hello, Jay. And I say, you know, Darlene, I, I want to have some butterflies at my bar mitzvah. Um, what happens then? So then I ask you what, what the date is, because if you want a lot of butterflies, we need some lead time. Then I ask you, do you want a basket release? or do you want individuals? Uh -huh. So my favorite is the individual because people can release their own butterfly at your uh, celebration. It's very personal. Uh, I, I saw a, a photograph you showed me uh, of a butterfly in a little, little tiny envelope. Yes. I mean, I, it's a good thing that butterflies don't have claustrophobia <laughs> because it, I guess they don't because there's not a lot of room in this envelope. Can you no. talk about how that works? So when we put them in the envelope, we put them in a cooler. And while they are cool, they sleep. So you'd have to take them out just a few minutes before you're ready to release them. And that way they will wake up. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> this is a secret. Call it a trade secret, if you will. Okay, so now I'm, I'm at the bar mitzvah, and the moment is right. I mean, it's a queue somehow, yes. and we have a uh, hundred people all with these little envelopes in their pockets, and it's time for the release. What do I do? So you can either do a blessing, a prayer, or a poem, depending on your occasion, and then everyone stands together and releases the butterflies together. Oh, on cue. So now you have a hundred people. You have a plume, take a, a plume of butterflies yeah. flittering around. And, and the chances are that if someone's wearing a lei, <laughs> there will be a butterfly flying to the lei or holding a flower. Um, there's lots of times that the butterfly will stay on their hand for a few moments before it flies off which gives you um, more photo opportunities. Oh, yeah. And so th then they, do they fly away or do they sort of stay around in a group at the, at the my bar mitzvah? It depends on where you're at. If you're in a garden, lots, you got a good chance that the, the butterflies are going to stick them around. Mm -hmm. If you're um, at the beach, they're probably going to go look for flowers where I they can eat. Would you do this indoors? No, because there's no way for the butterflies to to exit. There's nowhere for them to go. So outside of the church, outside of your venue, um, in the garden, uh, pavilions are nice, but inside the butterflies are going to get stuck. Well, I wanted to, I want to ask you about the challenges of all of that. Let's take a short break, Darlene. Uh, and we'll come back and I'll ask you, you know, what you have to worry about, what you wake up at three o'clock in the morning thinking about, about your, your beloved butterflies and how they're doing and, and um, you know, whether this is truly humane for them. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Lillian Kumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor and I have lots of 
uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Okay, we're back, we're live. We're talking about butterflies with Darlene Lou McDowell uh, here in Honolulu on ThinkTech. And we are exploring just exactly how wonderful you can, you know, you can make your event with butterflies, live butterflies, keep in your pocket and you launch them and they all fly together. And we have this fabulous video. Can you tell us about the video, Darlene? Oh, this client, um she allowed the, the couple allowed me to share this video but this is at lani kohonua in koolina uh -huh. and they had a hundred guests well they had a hundred butterflies and everyone along the aisle released a butterfly after they exchanged their vows oh wow so there were butterflies flying everywhere let's take a look <laughs> fabulous that's a little envelope we have and those are the flowers and the butterflies are flying everywhere. This is so beautiful. And the butterflies are totally perfect for it. Totally perfect. Wow. Oh. Makes you want to get married, no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I want to thank Cash Creative for, for creating that awesome video. Yeah. He really did an awesome job. Yeah. That's wonderful. It, it captures the moment of the it wedding. Does. And it does. It does. And it's a it. great finale yeah, yeah. because people will remember all of the butterflies flying around. So what happens? Now I'm asking you my, you know, questions about challenges and complications yes. that might arise. What happens if the, the ceremony goes a little too long and the butterflies, which have been, you know, like in, in, in low temperature and refrigerator what have you yes it's getting warm it's outside uh, do they get antsy yes, they will be getting antsy how do so, they get, act if they do that so they'll start scratching on the on the envelope and saying you know i want to come out <laughs> so the trick is to distribute the envelopes just before you're ready to release the butterflies and you keep them cool until you right distribute. right so a good method would be to put them in a basket and you know you have to prep your guests ahead of time yeah. and then do a quick distribution yeah. quietly yeah. and then right after the ceremony is done then everyone has their envelope and the butterflies are ready to go so when you prep your guests what do you tell them keep it in your pocket don't keep it in your pocket. Oh, don't, sorry. Oh, that's too warm. Right. Oh, okay, because okay. that's warming them up. So what do you tell them? Just hold it. Don't hold the envelope. And lots of times, they're, they, if you tell them there's a butterfly in there, they don't believe you. Is it <laughs> a live butterfly? <laughs> <laughs> it's so quiet. <laughs> yes. And so, yeah, don't don't smash the box or the, the envelope. Yeah. Just hold it. And then in a few minutes, you can release the butterfly. Amazing. So what do you have to worry about? I mean, butterfly, not all of them make it, right? That's you correct. You talked about the predators, yes. and I'm sure there are, you know, biological predators as well. Yes. Uh, what do you have to worry about in terms of keeping your, your, your babies alive? So one of the, the biggest challenges is to have enough butterflies for the event, which is the reason that I have the 15 to 20 people helping me raise the butterflies. In separate so that, places. Yes, so that we all pull the butterflies together that we have enough for our events. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so what, what could happen to the butterflies if things go wrong? Mm, they won't survive. Um, you know, there's a number of things that, that could go wrong. Uh, Suppose you had a sick butterfly. Yeah. Which you, which you wouldn't put that in an envelope. No. Oh, I'm getting sad just thinking about it because butterflies, butterflies are all totally sweet. Okay, yes. it, must, it must hurt you to see one of them not make yes, it. Yes, no? yes. And, and before I, I uh, put them in the envelopes or in the basket, I tell them, come on, babies, it's showtime. And we got to go. Okay, Mom, we're ready, We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. So is this business making money for you? Um, I, I couldn't do it full time. It couldn't support me full time. But it brings so much joy 
to the recipients and the people that help me raise them. It's a, it's a little, it's, I call it butterfly therapy. Ah, wonderful. Because it, it, um, it really makes, it creates happiness for everyone. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but I, I see, for example, somebody uh, carrying a butterfly onto an airplane. The stewardess uh, challenges this, this passenger, and the passenger says, no, this is not, this is not an ordinary butterfly. It's a service butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, the state of Hawaii does not allow the import or export oh, 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 oh. of insects. Oh, no. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be... Not a good thing. I don't know how they could treat a butterfly as an <laughs> insect anyway. Butterfly so much more than a lowly insect. Yes. <laughs> but I do ship to all the neighbor islands, uh -huh. FedEx overnight. So, you know, it is possible to get the butterflies mm -hmm. for what, release on the neighbor islands. What about uh, mainland? Could you ship no. there? No. Cannot. No. So let's talk about your website because it's really beautiful. Uh, let's go you. to the homepage and you can give us a tour, Darlene, of your website, right? Okay. So under the um, this page, if you can scroll down, it takes you, that's me, keep going, to a, a gallery of photos. And these are people that have released butterflies. And uh, on the right-hand side, there's a flag with boots. And this was shared by my customer. So when she released the butterflies out of a basket, the butterfly flew to this soldier's boot. Oh. And it stayed on the boot. Oh, how did you? Yeah. How, how did that happen? How did you? Did I, you no, know, I tell you, butterflies are spiritual. Yeah. They know. And it and it stayed. Uh, he also, it, he had a photo, and there was another photo with a butterfly, a different butterfly on his photo. And this soldier was killed in Afghanistan. So it was a, a number of years ago. Very sad, but it brought a lot of joy to the family to see. The photograph is spectacular. So that's one of a number of photographs you have on your photography, your yes. gallery there. Yes, Can and you talk about lots some of others? them. Well, yeah. lots of these photos are provided by my customers, ah, okay. so they they allow me to share them. But if you go to the top of the website, okay. um, under services, the you can learn about butterfly releases, wedding releases, memorial. Um, we do do a butterfly encounter where we go into a party and we bring the butterflies for feeding, and. Uh, we teach, it's an educational experience. <laughs> That's not Photoshop either. <laughs> so there's, there's a number of opportunities to um, interact with butterflies. Mm -hmm. But coming up on March 9th through April 19th, 2020, mm -hmm. we will have the butterfly exhibit at Pearl Ridge. And so people can go in and feed the butterflies. We'll also have different activities outside of the uh, butterfly house for those that are interested. So how do you how do you show them? Do you have a I hate to use the word cage, but do you have a place where it's you a can house? Play? Yeah, it's a seventeen foot by seventeen foot house. And and if if you and other contributors put monarch butterflies in there, how do you tell? which one belongs to whom? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a commodity. <laughs> it's, we're a team of people. You're all together. We're a family of people yeah. that, you know, we all enjoy butterflies. And, and the people that walk in take lots of photos with their butterflies. Uh, they, they can feed the butterfly on a stick. So there's an opportunity to interact with the butterflies. So uh, have you done this before uh, at the shopping center? Have you yes. done? Yes. Yes. So well, this is year number six. Year number six. Yes. You've been doing this a long time. So and so you're going to continue to do this. That's my question. Um, I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping to work with Pro Ridge, mm -hmm. so that they will, um, you know, support the community because there's a great demand. Well, you know thing about it is here we are in 2020 and uh, years back I'm sure you remember everybody went out into the, the wild all the time they were hiking and yes. camping and and now we talk about environment but 
we don't touch it nearly as much as we used to. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about how the number of uh, you know butterflies 20, 25 years ago was so much greater, and um, you know, so you, you're not going to go out on the Iea Loop Trail, take a hike, and see them there. Uh, you might. You might. You might. If you go. <laughs> but um, outside of our butterfly exhibit times, I do sell starter kits. And, and families can raise their own butterflies. Oh, you do? How nice of you. Yes. And so it's, um, it's very rewarding because I have parents that send me photos of their first butterfly and the joy that it's brought the family just to watch the whole cycle. And to teach the kids and to, teach the to be kids. careful with living beings. Yeah. Well, and responsibility because, yeah. you know, they have to feed. Yeah. the caterpillars yeah. but they can see them grow every day they can see the changes every day well you know here you are um, as a legal administrator with a full-time job because butterflies uh, you know aren't free I guess isn't that the old expression uh, <clears throat> and butterflies you know may not be able to support you where are you gonna take this going forward give me a five or a ten year plan oh. I feel certain you're gonna continue in some way but tell me how you will my dream is to have the butterflies on Hawaii Five O or Magnum PI <laughs> for a wedding, and that will create a huge demand because we are a destination wedding location. Uh -huh. So once that demand starts or, or or increases, then you know we can we can talk about possibly doing this. So that it can support. Yeah, that would make, yeah, that would yeah. make them very popular around the world. With, you know, with the 5-0. Uh, what about uh, just thinking? You know, if you're going to do a five-zero butterfly, you really like to paint the wings. No. So it's Hawaii five-zero. Can you do that? Can you no. actually decorate no. the wings? No, 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 no. It's a matter no. of being humane. Then. No, yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, at one of the weddings, all they have to do is release butterflies, and then people would be like, oh, "I want." I want that at my wedding or my daughter's sure, wedding or sure, sure. and then it would just create demand well you know although you can't uh, you know actually send the butterflies you know tra tra transport the butterflies to the mainland or outside of Hawaii for one legal reason or another you can certainly establish a franchise don't you think <laughs> Jay you're so funny <laughs> But, but one step, <laughs> one step at a time. <laughs> okay, so how I can how can I reach you? I go to your website. Yes. Uh, SharingTheButterflyExperience.com. There's uh, contact information there, or my phone number is eight zero eight seven five four six one three six. All right. You know, it, it's a great contribution you make. It's not only oh, the psychic benefit you. that you enjoy. It's yes. you're sharing. As you say, as the name says, you're sharing the experience, yes. you're sharing the, um, the fun and the, and the psychic benefit of, of this with everyone. So that's yes. great. Yeah. It's that, that is the whole fun of this whole process. Yeah. And we're here in the you know, factor, Finance Factors building, and it wouldn't surprise me, and it certainly wouldn't bother me if one day I walked out into the lobby and I, I saw some butterflies flying into the elevator. <laughs> I think the other tenants would not agree with you. <laughs> think big, darling. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Jay. I look Jay. forward to our next discussion. Thanks, Jay. Aloha. Aloha.